Alright, in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can go from a readme like this into one that's better like this. And so to start off, I'm not going to go through all that you can do with Markdown, although there is going to be some involved. There are plenty of tutorials out there on YouTube and Google, which go through the basics pretty well. But in this video, I want to add a bit of value by sharing some of the unique things that you can do with Markdown and integrating them into your readme. To me, the best way you can learn Markdown is instead of going through all the blog posts and tutorials, it's better to take a look at some readmes that you really like and see how you can imitate what other people have done in your own readmes. Not to say that tutorials aren't useful, they are good for getting a rough idea and learning the basics, but when it comes to more advanced functionality, you'll probably become more familiar if you have an actual use case. So I'm going to use my own profile readme as an example, but you can apply the same concepts to your project readme as well. So to start, let's just scroll through and see what kinds of features we are looking at. So at the top here, we have some badges. We have a drop down tag which can open and close. You will also have a Spotify integration and you also have some icons here which showcase your skills as well as your contact information. And below there's another blog post integration workflow, a GitHub integration workflow as well as some GitHub stats. So to start, let me just click on the edit button so you can see what exactly is going on underneath the hood. So essentially, if you're not familiar, when you're editing readme's on GitHub, you can actually preview the changes that you're making in the preview button over here. And so if I click this, you can see the exact readme that I have. And so let me just put this side by side. If I have the original readme over here and the code or the markdown over here, you can see that the first three badges that I have over here, they are images, which are left aligned and attribute here that specifies what this badge is about. And here you have the link to the actual image or the actual badge that you have. And to actually create this, you can go on to the shields.io page. So under aesthetics, I have the website over here. You can create badges for your projects, which are passing tests. If you go back and click on let's say code coverage, you have other examples as well. So I think one of the more relevant ones will be under social. So over here, you can see your number of GitHub followers. So I will just click on this and here you can just type in your username. So for me, let me just type in this and you can see at the bottom, it generates this batch over here, which can copy the batch URL. So when you click copy, this is going to be the URL that you will put in this source attribute over here. So if I paste that, you can see this is the batch that I just generated and you can even customize it further. If you look at the color over here, this is optional, but you can maybe say like red, click enter and you can see that the icon here actually changed color. For more documentation about this, you can actually go back to the front page and if I make this larger again, you can see here are the colors that you have available to you. So I tried red just now, but you also have other options. So this is actually really quick and easy to use. So essentially all you have is in square brackets an image tag with the source attribute. And after that image tag, you have this bracket github and this is basically just a definition for the github web page so if i scroll to the bottom you can see i've already defined these are like variables so the square brackets with the github within it is just going to link to my github profile page and you can go ahead and define other variables as well so as you can see i have youtube which links to my youtube channel and i have spotify which links to my spotify profile so one thing you also notice is that the style of this Spotify batch is quite different from the others. So that's because you can actually go to other repos such as this, where you can actually find many other badges that have already been built by other people. So you can actually just copy and paste this into your readme and it will work just fine. So this repo is one that's called Markdown Badges. Another one would be this over here, Badges for Readme Profile. I'm not going to go through all of them, so I really encourage you to take a look and see which badges you prefer for your own Readme. That's for the badges. Next, we have the toggle dropdowns that we have over here on the left. So over here, you can basically see that to create a dropdown, you will need to have details. So you have a details tag that starts here and ends here. So this is going to be the first dropdown and the summary will be the header that is going to be shown initially. So here I have the who am I, which is also displayed here. And when I click on the dropdown, you can then see the details, which is formatted like code. So as you can see over here, I have the details which matches up over here. And to create the code like effect, you can just put four spaces. So these four spaces will format your text as code. Again, quite simple and straightforward. All you need are the details and the summary text. And now a couple of other aesthetic related websites. One of them is carbon.now. This basically helps you to style your code in a much nicer fashion compared to a typical code in Markdown, which will look something like this. If you were to go over here and let's just say, typically you would do something like this and say, let's say if you're doing Python code, then you can say define a function, let's say add something like that and two numbers and you'll say to return n1 plus n2. Let's say you have something simple like this, then how this is formatted in Markdown will look something like that. If that's not really up to your liking, you can actually use carbon.now. So back over here, you can actually just use this over here and format the code such that it looks like this, a bit neater like that. 
and once you are satisfied you can actually drag to adjust the sizing over here change the theme and even change the background over here so many other options you can do you can even change the language they're using if the auto setting is not working well for you and here are some options where you can customize the background color very quickly and you can even change the top left window controls to suit your liking vertical padding as well as the horizontal padding and the drop shadow which makes your code look more professional and once you're done you can go to the export select the file name size and download it as a png or svg by default if you click on export it will save it as a png and you can then use it in your readme the other tool is a banner maker which basically helps you to quickly generate let's say a title for your project so let's say if you go with something like hello well i can go ahead and customize this to let's see what let's go with lobster and you can change this to a bigger font size change the background color to let's say a blue and the text color can also be changed to let's say a yellowish orange and once you're done you can just simply download it and you can also use it in your readme so back to the readme over here if you want to use it you should probably upload it to your repo and then you can actually link to it using the source attribute over here now let's go back and look at the other features that we have before we take a look at the spotify integration which takes a while to set up let's just look at some of the icons that you can use to customize your readme so if i scroll down you can actually see how i've linked up these icons to my readme so under the connect me again a very similar idea where you have an image tag and provide the source attribute to where the image is so in fact you can just go to flaticon.com and search for icons and all you need to do is provide the link to that icon so let's say we go to flat icon over here and say you want to search for an icon that's like youtube so let's just search for youtube click on one of these options and right here you can just right click and copy the image address to double check you can open it up in another tab over here and there you can see the icon right there so this is the image url that you can copy and paste within the source attribute over here and if you actually want to provide a link when a user clicks on the icon then you will need to provide the url in some square bracket over here so for me i have defined website youtube and linkedin at the bottom over here as i mentioned they're just like variables and you can do the same for the languages and tools as well all right so let's see back to the spotify integration so to set this up this is actually from one repo that i found which is yeah this over here so nova torrent you can go to this repo and click on the setup.md so basically this will give you something like that where you can see the name of the song the artist as well as some sound waves over here at the bottom and there are quite a few steps involved so i won't be going through everything exactly but i will go through the rough steps to get you started so first of all you need to create a spotify application if i go to this url over here you can see that in my dashboard you'll need to log in first and once you're logged in you can see here are some apps that i currently have and so let me just put this side by side so it's easier to see so under your dashboard you'll first need to create a spotify application just click create an app give it a name give it a simple description and accept the terms and conditions click create and once you have done this you will need to take note of the client id and client secret to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the steps i would really recommend that you save all this important information into a notes app so for me i have notion open over here so i'll just copy in the client id into the notes app copy in the client secret and make sure to keep your client secret a secret for me i'm just going to delete this app after i'm done with this video but once you have set this up you will need to go to your settings and add in a redirect url so here you can edit your settings scroll down to redirect url copy this add this and click add and once you're done click save don't forget to click save and then you will need to navigate to this url replacing your spotify client id which is shown over here and the response type you can copy it as per normal and the rest should be the same once you navigate to this url you will need to log in and then you should receive this url over here where you can copy the code portion so that's one part of the puzzle that you need and then the next step will be to create a string combining your spotify client id and client secret so again your client id is this value over here client secret is this value over here just put them side by side and code them into base64 so you can click on this tool over here which basically you just need to copy and paste in your client id colon client secret and you can copy the result with that you'll be able to run a curl command in this form where you can just replace in your c your code over here which you got from this step at the top and with that you should receive a refresh token and again save that inside your notes app so that you don't forget it because all of this information is going to be useful when you actually set up the repo on vercel so here is the next step on vercel if you don't have an account just click on this and sign up for an account for me i already have an account so i will just go ahead and create a new project 
and then you will just import that git repository that we were just looking at so here once you have registered you need to fork this repo to fork it just scroll to the top and click on the fork button and fork it to your account once you have forked it you should be able to see when you click on new project you should be able to see the project here just click on import and you should see something like this over here where i have this project deployed so if i click on this and go back to the steps over here the next step will be to add in these environment variables so if i go back here you can see if i enlarge this and click on my settings you can see over here environment variables i have set up the environment variables below over here to add your own environment variable first start with the name so spotify secret id copy this paste it here and then paste in your own secret id so for me that's going to be the value over here copy this and if you have saved it in your notes app then you should just copy from that notes app and do the same for the other environment variables as well for me i've already set this up so again error but for you it should work fine once that is done go back here and see you need to deploy it so when you're done you should be able to click a deploy button and give it a moment to load and once you're done you can actually just add this to your readme so back over here that's where i have the spotify setup so this is the exact same url but replacing the username with my own username so for me this is the username of my Vercel app and then following that i have my user id over here this is my username for my spotify user account to find out what this id is for your own spotify account i believe you can just go to the spotify web app and take a look at your profile all right so that's it for setting up the spotify besides the spotify workflow we have this blog post workflow over here which i've used so this is a workflow that you can actually find over here at this url the steps are pretty simple you just need to go to your repository and add in this to your readme so for me i have added it in so let's take a look over here at the bottom where i have my youtube videos all you need to do is to define your blog post start and your blog post end so in this case they're using some typical blog post website for me i'm using youtube that's why i call it youtube as you can see below here in the feed list this workflow is for integrating with dev.2 as well as what looks like a personal feed over here so to create your own you first need to create a folder that's called github and create a workflows folder inside it if it doesn't already exist so if i take a look at my repo over here or over here let's just click on this you can see that i have a dot github slash workflows folder so if i click on this you can see i've already created two workflows over here but if you have not already created it then you just need to click on add a file create a new file and here just type in dot github and if i click slash you can see that the folder is created over here slash workflows slash again and type in the name of the workflow that you want so here is the contents that they recommend if i scroll over here and it will look pretty similar to mine so if i leave this and let me navigate to my workflow blog post workflow you can see that all you need to change is at the bottom over here your feed list and here what i've provided if you have a youtube channel that you want to share you just need to provide your channel id which you can find if you look at your studio web page and this is my channel id so i've copied this and then pasted it in over here and once you save this your workflow should work fine so you can replace the above url list with your own rss feed urls commit the changes and wait for the workflow to run automatically if you're lost as to what steps you can take you can watch this video over here but if not things should work pretty well at the bottom here are more options you can customize so do take a look if you'd like to customize the workflow further if you scroll down here are some advanced research examples popular sources which you can link your workflow to for example dev.2 which is shown above we also have stack overflow medium youtube so that's how i know the url to specify all right so let's go back here this one over here is a github workflow which is this one over here quite similar to the blog post workflow so you need to add in again the starting and ending section add this workflow into your repo so for me this is over here if i move this here you can see my workflows i already have an update readme and this is going to look similar to this over here the difference here is that you specify in your env portion you need to specify the github token so this secrets.github token should be found in your profile settings over here if you have any issues with this do let me know in the comment section below and i'll do my best to help out so the job over here runs every half an hour which is specified by this star slash 30 and you can change this up to your liking based on the cron syntax that you can take a look at over here so for example every five minutes will be slash five and so on so this is a really useful resource for determining the interval for which your workflow will run so we've already looked at most of the features and the last part over here is just about the github stats so if i go back to my edits if i have it back over here let me just go back to my page and edit this file you can see that to create this i'm using this thing called github readme stats if you google this let's say github readme stats you should be able to find it over here and you can see from here you can figure out how to use this so for example a github stats card you can use this piece of code over here in your readme 
and you just need to take note of what you need to replace in this URL. So for example, the username is highlighted for you, just replace this with your GitHub username and likewise here. And to customize it further, you can hide individual stats. You can also include your private contributions, showing of icons as well as choosing a particular theme. For the theme, you can just specify in this key value pair over here. So for example, once you've put in your username, you can specify show icons, retrieve theme to be radio. To take a look at all the themes that are available, you can scroll down and see here are all the available themes. So let's take a look at some of the themes that we have. These are the themes for the stats. And if you scroll down, you can see themes for the repo card. That's pretty much all there is to the themes. There's also a whole lot more you can customize, for example, the title color, text color, and so on. Explore these options if you'd like to customize your cards further. But besides that, let's just scroll a bit more and see what else we have. Here is a feature that allows you to have extra pins in your repo. So for example, if you go to your typical repo page or your typical profile page, you will be able to see at the bottom, you have some pins over here but you can only have six pins. So if you want to have more pins, then you can actually use this extra pins function over here, where you can just specify a readme card, provide the link again as usual, specify your username and your repo. So this will be your repo name, and here you can provide the link to your repo. And it's going to look something like this if you don't provide any theme. So if I look at this again, you can see at the bottom, near the bottom, I have the typical API endpoint, followed by my username, and then followed by the repo name, and lastly, followed by the theme name. So in this case, I'm using a theme that's called Bear. All right, so that's almost everything that I have to cover. But before we go, let's take a look at a really cool website that you can use to get started with creating your readme. So there's this repo over here, or rather this under examples, I have this website over here. And so this is created by this guy over here, whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce. But essentially, you can actually just customize the text over here. So let's say you can change to your name, you can change all this and specify what kinds of skills you have over here. Simply click on them to include them in your readme. You can just scroll through all of these, scroll, scroll, scroll. And near the bottom, you can actually select your social media. So I can select, let's say GitHub, go for LinkedIn. And the elements here, you can display your visitors count, your GitHub trophy and so on. Once you're done, you can just click on the generate readme button. And just like that, you will easily generate the code for your readme. All you need to do is to copy this text and paste it in your readme and this should work just fine. If you want to preview this, you can actually just click on the preview button and there you can see what it actually looks like. So it's honestly a really great way to get started with creating a very nice readme. And from there, can you just customize it to look the way you really want it to? And so I've already copied that. And in fact, there's actually a copy button. If I were to go back here, you can see you can actually click on the copy markdown. So I'm just going to copy this go back over here and just to demo this, I'm just going to paste it here and click on preview. And this is exactly as what we saw in the page over here. So this is pretty cool. I would honestly take a look at this if I were just getting started. And it's also great to see how they actually implement this underneath the hood. Another couple of repos that I would like to share, one is this awesome readme page, which basically is a repo of awesome readme's. So if you scroll down, you can see all of these examples and the reasons why they're awesome. So here they have multiple badges and if you scroll, there's a ton of examples here. So I picked out a couple that I really like, for example, this high cat over here. It includes a GIF, which I think is really helpful for projects and the way that they actually style the code over here and the badges. It really makes things very easy to read and for people who are interested in your repo to find out more about your project. Another one is this React on Lambda, which has this really cool logo. It's a really short and sweet cartoon over here, followed by badges again. A nice description over here that tells you more about the project. And if you scroll down, you can also see there's some code that's very nicely formatted. I really encourage you to take a look at other repos as well to see what features people are actually using and try and replicate that in your own repos. To do that, it's actually really simple. You just need to click on the uh, readme page. So over here, I can click on this file. To take a look at what's underneath the hood, click on the edit button over here in the top right corner. Click on edit and you can see this is actually how they do it underneath the hood. They have divs, images. So pretty similar to what we've been looking at just with different images. And again, you can click on the preview button as you make changes to see how things will look like if you were to use it in your own repo. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. I've gone through all the features that I think would be really great for making your readme look better. If you do know of any other tips and tricks or any other tools out there, do share in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions, do drop a comment down below and I'll definitely get back to you. If you found this video useful, do give it a like, share it, and consider subscribing for more of such videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.